Last time we have seen that the CN Care's total DPS is much lower than the DPS of a average Super Care. And I believe most of us expected to see such difference. After all, the Super Cares have more fighter slots, they can equip heavy fighters, and they have more fighters per slot by default. Now, today we'll be taking a look at the differences between the CN Care and the Versatile Assault Trips now. The Versatile Assault Trips are kind of classified as faction cares, and the CN Care is also a faction care. So, it will be fun to see uh, how do these ships compare to one another. And as we can see, uh, this is a different CN Care, not the golden one. The, the golden one. Uh, can't have its core removed for some reason, so I, you know, in order to make the comparison fair, I just had to, uh, well, build a new care for this test, and I believe this is the new silver vault score, and I will show you the the stats. Now, all of the ships, well, two of the ships that you will see here, I will have only the primary attributes of the nano core active, and I'll be using about the same equipment and the same rigs to make this uh, this test fair for the ships. Now this Yankir has 12,017.41 DPS, it has the same build as the previous Yankir, it does have, it does seem to have a lower DPS but this is basically the same, uh, the same build that I have Four damage mods, one uh, fighter damage, or fighter damage mod, and I believe that the average PVE care has about about a similar build to this one. As for the rigs, three burst adapters and the engineering rigs are also uh, the semiconductor memory cells, and this is going to be the same build that I'll use on the Astarte as well. Now as for the Nanocore, uh, I have a 19.20% primary bonus for light fighters and here you can take a look at the uh, other primary stats. Now I usually never upgrade my Nanocores, I always use the default uh, values, but for another video I'll be taking a look at all the different Nanocores for the versatile soul ships and I'll be upgraded. But here you can take a look at the Nanocore stats for the Silver Waltz Nanocore for the CN Carrier. It does seem to be good. I mean, you got some uh, E War resistance and similar stuff, so I guess uh, if. Well, I don't, I don't think that's going to be required for this ship. It's so low, so you're definitely not going to be uh, running away from anything. If if you get webbed, uh, the speed reduction. I mean, it's it's a carrier, right? They are slow, so you are definitely not going to be outmaneuvering anything with a cavalry ship. And well, this is the blast out of the Good stats, and you can definitely get more DPS out of this thing uh, if you decide to level up the nanocore. Although that is optional. All of my nanocores that I use are all. Uh, with the primary attribute. I don't even have a upgrade core at the moment. So uh, let's take a look at the total DPS outputs with this current build. Well the server is a bit laggy, well the when I say laggy the internet my my internet or the game is not working that well for some reason. Takes a year to load the icons. There we go. Alright, well, uh, let's orbit the station and let me quickly rearrange the buttons, the modules, so it looks nice. I still wish that they had a third row of a uh, third module row on the front page, would definitely make this much easier. Alright, so uh, the CN Carrier is a shield tank, it can fit command bursts, and I definitely recommend that you have command bursts, they enhance the overall ship. Uh, performance and yeah, <laughs> I messed up the module slots there. Uh, four micro war object guides instead of four damage mods. All right, well, uh, let's quickly fix and then now that's better. Okay, four damage mods are now installed and one micro war object guide. Well, yeah, that, that, this means that I'm recording late at night, as you can see. Anyway, the implant will be the aerospace tactic implant for both of the ships today, and I'll be using the same. Uh, the same 
general units and basically the same uh, secondary attributes, same level, so that both ships have the same uh, bonus effect in the DPS. So now, if when when I have the proper modules installed, let's undock and let's Undocking. see the maximum DPS of this ship. It should be roughly around twenty thousand DPS, which is about the average DPS that uh, the CN Care has, at least in in my hands here. The golden one can have a, like twenty five thousand with the offenders, but that's a golden one. This is with the purple and core, which I believe has a smaller total bonus on. On DPS, nineteen thousand ninety one point fourteen and DPS. So honestly, that's okay. It should, it will serve very well for this test. About the same DPS as the previous CN here that has a golden card. I think the the golden one has like twenty twenty one thousand DPS, but honestly, it isn't much of a big difference. So we we should expect about the same uh, performance out of these two ships. Well. When I say these two ships, when I'm comparing this CN Care with the previous one, well, the ship that I'll be using today is the Astarte. I usually like to start with this ship first. It's my fav. I mean, Blood Raiders are one of my favorite factions in the game, so I'm um, definitely starting with the with the Astarte. Now, these ships have been buffed recently, uh, and they have been changed a bit. Uh, they can now fit a Sino uh, field generator, and it means that you can eat other capitals. Uh, these ships have uh, gained a new purpose, a new role basically, so uh, that's one nice thing. And they also have increased uh, their faction role, 33.3 km webs on the Astarte, which you know is a boost from 29.6 km on the other Blood Raiders. Honestly, pretty good. But the, the ability to open Sino made these ships. Uh, very very important. They are now more expensive than they used to be. Now as for the rigs, the Bristol Assault ships use lightweight ships and you can well, you can fit normal fighter rigs but you are not going to get any bonus item. You have to fit the the lightweight ship rigs in order to basically improve the lightweight ship performance and this is where things get interesting uh, since these ships used to have the networking mode as well but the networking mode has been removed in all of the last updates and they gained the extra sensor boost uh, from, from the network, network mode to be basically a, a passive uh, stat. While the CN carrier is more similar to the normal carriers because it has the sensor mode. And of course these ships also have hangar bay modification systems. Which means that you can tamper with what light ships you want to have installed. Now I'm not going to change the system uh, at the moment because uh, it, just to make you know, uh, I guess things fair. Uh, not many players have the tier four hangar modification, and I, I would say the tier four one. If you have four destroyers, it's the best combination. Four destroyers with turrets on this ship. Mm, that's maximum. Possible build, but I'll be using the standard modification, basically two destroyers and one frigate. Now, this uh, this uh, ship has 10% per skill level on turrets and 75% bonus per skill level on missiles. So, if you want to have more DPS on the Astarte, you should fit the lightweight ships that use turrets. The Anaconda has a different bonus; has a better bonus on on missiles. And up until a couple months ago, the missiles were actually better than the turrets. But with the addition of the new skills, uh, the turrets are performing much better now. And with one frigate slot, I'll just slap a bomber. So it's in, it is interesting because the bombers will have more DPS than the frigates, than the other interceptors that we can fit. So I usually uh, use this combination for, well, best DPS if you're using uh, this hangar bay modification. Now one thing where the CN here and the versatile saw ships are similar is the fact that they have special modules. Now this ship has the swarm module and as you can see it can fit the command bursts. The CN here also has, a, has two special modules, the centralized and the decentralized command module which does have some uh, stats. It basically increases the tank, DPS, speed and things like that. While this Swarm module does about the same, 
uh, just for the versatile assault ships. And since this is a blood raider, I'll just fit a web dual Nosferatus and a capital neutralizer. Good thing about the blood raider is the capital Nosferatus will have a effect on subcapitals. You can murder the capacitor of subcapitals with the Astarte because it has the overload penalty bonus, which means that no matter what size, you know, Nosferatu you have, it's going to drain all, all the way to zero. It doesn't matter uh, what's the capacitor that was on the enemy ship. And of course, uh, the versatile assault ships use different DPS modules. They're using, they're using the Swarm General Unit, which basically combines the Micro Warbreath Guide and it also combines the Fighter Damage Mod into a module to basically make uh, the ships even more unique and overall uh, that would be the... I mean, they're both faction carriers, but when you look at the details of the ships, you will see that they're actually different. Uh, they're both classified as faction carrier, but they're, you know, uh, different. And I like the difference between these two ships. Now, this is a blood raider. It doesn't need any capacitor batteries, although you can use a capacitor battery if you like, but uh, since capacitor is not going to be a problem with this ship, I'll just slap two armor repairs, and basically the build on this ship will be completed for this little test since we are testing out maximum dps and here we are 9000 9 now we immediately see that the dps on the on the ship is lower that's because i don't have an nano core but let's fit the same silver wall silver walled score now you can pick between turret and missile bonus since this thing has a bonus on turrets i'll just go with turrets uh, it's definitely the 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 well the, the right choice for the Astarte. The villain and the Astarte and the Vazago uh, have basically the better turret bonus, while the Anaconda should have better missile stats. Although the Vazago has both turrets and missiles, so the Vazago can do both. It's a very interesting it's a very interesting ship, and the Vazago is I would say the more popular versatile assault ship because. Uh, the Vazago, you know, it has more DPS, and more DPS in return means it's probably going to be doing better for PvE, PvP, or whatever other uh, purpose player assigned the ship I'm for now. Let's unlock, and let's take a look at the, at the active DPS value of this ship. Now you will notice uh, that most of the, the largest DPS gain is going to come out of the carrier swarm module. It does have a significant DPS boost and it also does last for about 200 seconds. So that module is definitely a must have for the ship. 15,737.65 DPS. This is without the special module active. The special module on the CN carrier does also have a damage boost, but it is much less than the bonus that you get from the swarm module 19,000 or 90.44 and on the CN carrier we have 19,370 so the CN carrier has a little bit more total paper DPS than the Astarte with this current build. Now the DPS is going to vary uh, if I had the destroyer hangar bay the DPS would be significantly higher um, on the Astarte than on the CN carrier. That's basically uh, the main difference here between the DPS value, but you know, it's pretty comparable DPS, it's almost the same DPS, well you can actually call it the same DPS, since like a hundred DPS up and down isn't much of a difference, but you know, it, it's decent uh, DPS output for this current build. And of course, I have to mention uh, one aspect where the versatile solar ships are much better than the CN here is the fact that they are more tanky, they have a bonus on plates, and uh, they are ships that are designed to be tanky, they're designed to uh, be you know, hard to kill while the CN carrier gets a bonus on the active tank, on the active shield tank, because it has a bonus on the shield boosters. Now, uh, let's see how this thing will uh, work in combat. When we look at the one interesting uh, thing about these ships, they're both quite expensive. 
And uh, fun fact, the CN care is actually much cheaper to buy to afford. It's much easier to afford a CN care than to afford a, a starter, for example. But the CN care's loss mail is much, much greater than the loss mail of the Astar. I think the first of all, ships loss mail goes around, around 350 billion to around 380 to 400 billion, while the CN carrier's loss mail goes from 600 billion to about close to 1 trillion. So, while the CN carrier is much easier to afford and build, uh, it also costs a lot more when you lose it. Uh, balance, I guess. Uh, 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 but the price tag of the Verstel Solar Trips now, well, it used to be about 50 to 100 billion to get the whole. Uh, but after the new update, after they have been buffed, I think the price tag is somewhere around 100 to 150, in some cases 200 billion. That's just for the whole, and then you have to afford the hangar bay. And honestly, I don't know how much the hangar bay costs. We're under attack. I remember someone telling me it was in some cases it used to be 60 to 60 to 115 billion for the hangar bay. Uh, that was that's a uh, very outdated price tag, if you ask me, because uh, I've heard about that like seven months ago or something. So definitely not the most up-to-date uh, price because I'm not really aware of how much the hangar bay costs now but it's definitely probably quite pricey and then we also have to look at the equipment and generally looking at the equipment of the versatile solar ship it is a bit more expensive to gear out these ships than, than it is to gear out a cn care because the lightweight ships are generally more expensive than the fighters uh, for the lighter ships you actually have to have holes of other ships in order to to build them and in the future that's going to be extended so the lightweight ships production definitely a bit more complex than the production of the fighters at least that's what it looks like uh, so it's quite and cost performance ratio it's a very interesting topic because i would say the cn carrier will definitely be easier to gear out easier to build and it does seem uh, that it is, it is easier to afford a CN here. And of course, we have to uh, also consider the fact that the CN carrier can stroll in high sec. Almost one thing I, I almost forget every time. <laughs> the CN carrier can easily just stroll into high sec. And you know, you, you can just relax in high sec with the ship. No one is going to uh, be able to prevent that with the rest of the solar chips you have no access to high sec so you are basically limited to oh you, you're basically limited to uh, low sec and no sec which honestly isn't Enemy ships that isn't that isn't that bad if you ask me because in no sec uh, you can definitely We're get a uh, a higher isk per hour ratio I mean I've been told, all the players told me that the CN care is useless in high sec. Well, not exactly useless in that term, but uh, wasted potential. That's what they're trying to say. I, they told me that the um, CN care's potential in high sec is wasted because it can just do much, much, much better in no sec. In low sec, well, uh, it is not recommended to fly these ships in low sec, at least solo, at least for PvE. For PvP, you can, you can do that, but, but you know. Uh, for for PvP it will work, but for PvE it is safer to just stay in deep null or in high sec in the case of the CN carrier. Mostly because of pirates, if someone sees a versatile solar trip doing PvE that's going to get jumped and swarmed so fast it, the, the server would crash, trust me. <laughs> there, there would be, it would create such a such a chaotic environment. I actually, I actually seen that. Uh, happen. Had a couple opportunities to to witness uh, a alliance-wide mobilization when uh, there was a tackled. I think it was a tackled CN care. Everyone woke up. Literally, the whole alliance woke up, uh, and that was that was fun to experience. But yeah, definitely not a smart idea to fly uh, these super expensive ships into uh, into low sec of course uh, i am not going to stop anyone from from doing that if you want to fly 
the ships in low sec storyline missions or similar, go for it. I'm just saying, be careful because uh, there will be pirates who will be looking to get their hands on a tasty, uh, on, on a tasty kill. Uh, and I, w I still say that the um, best ships for low sec content for at least when it when it comes to storylines and when it comes to missions and PVE, I, w I would say definitely frigates, cruisers, battle cruisers, n smaller, nimble ships that can maneuver around are are much much better for PVE than huge ships that are that are huge uh, targets. But again. Uh, it's Eve. You are free to fly whatever ship you want, the way you want. No one, no one can tell you otherwise. Anyway, uh, how's look, how's the performance on on this thing? Well, it's actually pretty good. Although I'm personally uh, quite used to to clear this uh, faster with the. With the dr with the well, not with the drones uh, with the destroyer fleet, the des the destroyer squad I, I call it the squad but the destroyer lighter ships with turrets are really strong and really scary. Uh, so it's all knows what's the price of the destroyer hangar bay. Uh, I, I would love to know. I couldn't really find any accurate price tag. It's kind of funny because whenever I'm trying to find like. Uh, info on, uh, on a price of a, of a certain ship, everyone automatically assumes that I want to buy it and everyone just wants to rip me off basically. Uh, so I've been told ridiculous price tags but it doesn't really look realistic so uh, if someone knows what's the actual price of the hangar base let me know because the price tags that I've seen that I've been told don't look realistic. Uh, so the, I have no idea how much it costs. I, last time again I've heard 60 billion but I believe that price might be lower, might be higher actually, who knows, depends on uh, how how much are they used, I guess. But I, I think the Versatile Assault Shifts will uh, see more use, especially since they can open Sino now. So... That is kinda, kinda interesting. The CN carrier would be funny if the CN carrier could open Sino. It would be hilarious, actually. It would be the most expensive Sino ship ever, and it's uh, not exactly the tankiest. It is interesting because the Versatile Assault ships kind of. kind of feel like the capital version of, of the Black Ops ships. And, you know, I still say for the Black Ops ships, well, the, the Black Ops that we have received a couple of weeks ago, the one thing that they're missing is speed. Uh, that's my only complaint about them right now, it's speed. They need to have that cloaked velocity bonus, but we will see what, what the developers will do. Uh, seems like some things are happening, so uh, we will... I'll definitely pay close attention to... Uh, what's going to happen with those uh, with those black ops ships? But I, I expect their speed to be uh, buffed. At least the clock speed. They will probably receive a uh, extra problems. I guess that's just what I think will happen. But uh, back to the capital ships now. Uh, as you can see, it does clear fast. The bomber is now the reason why I don't like to have a frigate in my uh, in my light the ship lineup. Usually the optimal range of the frigate is much shorter than the optimal range of uh, of your destroyer. So it kind of is a tricky part to find the, the optimal universal orbit for, for, these, uh, for, for these light the ships. And in this case my destroyers are applying more damage We're than my bomber is. And this is one of the reasons why I also uh, like to use the destroyers because they all have about the same orbit, so you can just slap the same orbit and just let them be at, at that orbit. With the frigates, with the bombers at least, it is a bit more difficult to find the optimal 
universal orbit since uh, usually the optimal range for the bomber is about the closest possible dif distance for the destroyer so your DPS uh, on the um, on the destroyer is going to be less applied well it's going to apply I mean it's used turrets right uh, but the accuracy will be you know a bit iffy with uh, with a closer orbit now you could maybe solve that by using a Interceptor, although the Interceptor has even more short range. Although the intercep Interceptor, the Lightweight inter Interceptor has more of a bonus with tackling, they can web and scramble the target. So they're more of a tackle, their, their purpose is more of, of a tackle, so uh, that's the thing about the ships. It's difficult to find the middle, the midpoint, the optimal universal orbit for, uh, for the mix of the stars and frigates. Which again, just uh, goes to show that in this case, if you're aiming for the rest of assault ships, uh, I still recommend that you use, if you can of course, if it's possible, if it's in the budget, uh, to go with the four destroyer hangar bay, because that one is definitely the best. And it's easier to use. Now of course, if you want to use frigates, you can do that, if you want to use a mix, uh, you can also use a mix, uh, again, all of the different hangar bays have their purpose. I'm not saying that one is the best, I'm saying that for maximum DPS, for PvE, in this case, the destroyers would simply uh, be, in with quotation marks, I have to I have to actually say this, with, with quotation marks, I would say it, it's the best, because who knows, maybe down the road they change the ships again, and maybe down the road uh, the best, best DPS. Uh, is changed again because you know everything is dynamic everything is kind of subject to change so who knows maybe down the road they will change them again and maybe the maybe the bombers will be the best i mean we will see everything is anything is possible <laughs> as we have as we have seen uh, anything is possible and so far uh it's been clearing this i mean very well no complaints uh, this cl clear about the same as the cn care did in the previous video you know the previous videos i've done i've done like five videos so uh I, I don't know what was the previous video i've done also different games so um kind of when i say lost not lost in that case but i kind of forgot to keep track of what i uploaded last so my apologies for that but in any case uh i think this should be the the last wave and it does clear it very nicely definitely the aerospace tactic implant does help a lot uh, the aerospace tactic implant has proven to be uh, very good when it comes to the general performance of all the drone boats, carriers and of course super carriers and of course lightweight ships since the lightweight ships, well drones, uh, they're drones but they're not exactly fighters, they're ships. It's funny, uh, their, ca their category or classification is a bit weird but you know uh, they have about the same mechanic as the other drone weapon systems. So, uh, that was very good run with the Astarte. And now let me Autopilot change engaged. ships and let's see how the CN Care will perform. Now, I know the previous CN Care has a golden core and unfortunately it, it, I can't click on the core. I, when I click on the core, it just nothing, nothing happens. So I can I can't show you the stats, but uh, the core is not accurate. I never upgrade, obviously. So it is just the default core, but golden uh, with the default We're stats. Now, which stat was put there? I think it's the DPS stat for the damage of light fighters. But I don't know. Maybe it's bugged. Maybe that's bugged as well. So. Who knows what the primary stat on that thing is, but on this ship we have seen the primary stat, it has a bonus on the a lightweight, a lightweight, yeah, lightweight ships on a CNK for sure. Um, it has a bonus on the light fighters. If I mess up, if I call them lightweight ships, my apologies, uh, it's just lightweight ship, light, light fighter, heavy fighter, you know, all these things when you are using the terms. It's bound to have a you know uh, a mistake in me talking about it. But I I if I say light ship, I'm talking about the light fighters on the sea and care. So you know, just if I make that mistake, to be 
to be clear, I'm talking about this ship. So I can immediately say that the alpha damage, the total, the total alpha damage is higher on the lightweight ships on the Astarte. That's one thing I noticed. They have some pretty tasty alpha. And as we can see, the total amount of ships per, per slot is also quite different. With the CNK, you can fit 12 air superiority fighters, which are the smallest fighters to design to trace down smaller ships. Or you can fit 9 of the normal light fighters. Now, with the versatile assault ships, with the, with the lightweight ships, it is different. You can't fit a lot of them since they are generally larger than the fighters. When you, when you take a look at a light with the story and you put a light with fighter, it's a huge difference between the between the vehicles between, between the ships. Well, technically ships. One is fighter, and one is the one is the story. But you, I think you, I think it's uh, you get what I'm trying to say. Uh, they're larger ships, and therefore you can fit a lot of them uh, inside the, the the carrier. But the total DPS is, as we have seen, roughly the same, with the difference of, uh, with the difference where the the stars seem to have a bit more alpha damage than the light fighters on the CN carrier here. Now, uh, one thing where this thing is, I would say, performing a bit better, it has a higher sustained DPS. Now, I have to remember that. The Astarte had about 15,000 DPS without the special mode being active. The special mode basically does add about five, uh, four, 5,000 more DPS, but the effect lasts about 20 seconds and then you have a cooldown. With the CN Carrier, you have a special mode that increases the DPS by 10%, but your, but your default DPS without a special mode is about 18,000, so you have 18,000 DPS on this ship and 15,000 DPS on the start, which means that technically this ship should clear a little bit faster uh, if, well, it should clear a bit faster when the module on the start is in cooldown. So the CN carrier might have a little advantage over the Astarte with that current build of course uh, using the current hangar bay in terms of how much DPS it can deliver without having the special swarm module or the special decentralized command module uh, active so on paper it means that the CN carrier should clear faster although Something interesting does happen, uh, since I already talked about the CN carrier, it seems to have less alpha damage, and even though it, it has higher DPS, it somewhat feels like um, taking a bit longer to clear uh, the wave. It does seem like it takes a bit longer for me to kill a ship, while uh, with the Astarte, it, it, it did seem like it was slapping those ships in almost like one or two cycles, so it is quite interesting how uh, how the math works. Well, and it's one of the things I love about the game because uh, you you can have ridiculously high DPS numbers, but it's one thing to just look at the you know at the paper value and then you have the actual performance in combat. So uh, I was quite scared a long time ago uh, from the DPS that you can actually with implants for example but uh, turns out it's not much of a big deal uh, when you start to use that in in the game so there is definitely a lot of things regarding DPS that's you know not not all on paper stuff but you also have to um, include the actual performance and how the thing actually works out there so uh, so far a very interesting result because it seems like it will be about the same, I would say. My expectation is that the performance is going to be about the same with this current uh, build, with this current setup. Uh, I honestly expected the CN carrier to pull ahead because of the more stable DPS that it rolls, but maybe, uh, maybe we, we will see a difference. Uh, when I change the hangar bay on the, the stores in the next video and then 
Uh, and then to make things fair, I think if I do change the hangar modes on the Astarte to fit stars, maybe then I will use the offense fighters on the CN carrier. Just to try to match the DPS to see if I can still get about the same performance between the, the two ships. Although I think the lightweight destroyers will definitely pull ahead based on my previous experience with the lightweight ship. But we will see what will happen. It is uh, open to debate as well. But so far, I mean, I, you will be surprised, but uh, I actually do enjoy flying the sea and care. It's a very... It's one of the ships that... I, I don't know how to describe it, honestly. Uh, when I did fly this thing for the very first time a couple months ago, uh, when it was released, uh, it, it felt... it felt different. It felt... like a ship that you can buy and just relax and forget about, you know... You can take the ship and basically go on a vacation. That's basically what it felt like. It felt like I was on a vacation while I was flying this thing. It, it is a very relaxing experience, especially if you keep this thing in high sec. And I definitely see the reason why players like to fly this thing in high sec. It is a very a relaxing experience. And I definitely don't blame anyone from, for flying this ship in high sec only. It, it is a very uh, relaxing experience. Definitely a unique one because it's not every day that you can take a carrier in high sec it's basically unheard of before this thing was added to the game so that's one thing that is kind of special to to the cnc carrier and of course i cannot mention the cn carrier without mentioning the cn ocean oh my god that, that joke is getting a bit old i know my apologies but it is still ridiculously funny so imagine a uh, Concorde supercarrier just rolling around in high sec. Oh, that would that be funny, wouldn't it? Maybe, who knows? I have no information on it, so don't, you know, I'm, I'm joking now, but uh, don't, you know, when I, when I talk about the sea and ocean, it's just a joke for now. I say for now because, you know, you never know if a developer will just, you know, decide to watch one of my videos and say, oh, this guy is talking about the sea and ocean. And then the developer takes, uh, I talked about this last time, but they take a huge bong rip and then they say, well, let's make one. <laughs> let's make one. And then they make one. And then we are just sitting there looking at a swarm of sea and oceans in Yita. Would be funny. Uh, but yeah, for now, for now it's just a joke. So don't take the sea and ocean stuff seriously. It's, it's just a joke. Anyway. Back to the act actual uh, CNC carrier here. As expected, the performance is pretty good. Uh, I actually thought about using. No, I've been told the, to test out like five damage mods, uh, but you know, the maximum boost, let's say, you will notice the maximum boost in DPS with up to four damage mods at best. Fe fifth, sixth, or seventh damage mod basically doesn't going to it's not going to enhance much it's uh, more of a wasted salt now i know for some pve ships uh, you can actually use fifth or sixth slot to Any keep the hot dps running it's one of the ways to attack. basically uh, prevent the cooldown from lowering your dps and honestly attack. i can see that working on on normal ships but with carriers, the special, well, the, spe the DPS mode basically doesn't have a cooldown. It's it's cycling. So, a fifth module maybe if you really need that little boost in DPS. But from what I've seen, four is the optimal number. Above four, if you want. I mean, I'm not going to stop you, but uh, above four feels like wasted slots, uh, especially since. Uh, you also need a micro warbreath guide for this uh, for this ship. The micro warbreath guide may save your ship in all of in all of cases since uh, I I seen a lot of CN carriers just get wrecked in in all sec uh, because they uh, don't have a micro warbreath guide or they are, they're basically AFK and sleeping. <laughs> Number one cause of death for CN carrier in all sec sleeping. Wish that was a joke, but. Unfortunately, it's not. It's basically the number one reason why these ships are blowing up. One of the other reasons is the fact that 
most of these ships are not prepared for PvP. They're running exclusive PvE builds, which maxes out the DPS, but for return the ship can't chase down a tackle ship, which is deadly if uh, if you know if the ship is caught and if, if you can't kill the tackle, you are in trouble. So I always uh, have a micro warbreath guide or two on most of the ships, or most of the carriers that I fly. Uh, when I was in Olsec, um, the carriers that I used had micro warbreath guides, and I had an alt scouting the the pipe, so I, I knew if I was in trouble. And thankfully, I I was never in trouble. I have no, I've never lost a carrier so far. Never lost a capital, so that's. That's a good track record, and I don't fly super carriers or carriers or, or generals at the moment, so I think I'm I'm safe in that aspect. But always try to have some defense against tackle ships. I mean, it doesn't take much. The air superiority fighters are fast. You can easily catch a, a tackle ship, although if you get bubbled, well, if you get bubbled, it's just GG unless you have support. Uh, another thing, tank. Uh, balance between tank, DPS and fighter speed is definitely what I would do for an all sec. For a high sec you can go for full DPS, it's not going to be you know, lethal for the ship, but in null sec definitely need, you need to have some uh, form of anti-tackle or defense or scouts that inform, uh, inform you what's up ahead. And that's just you know things based on on my experience from what I've seen uh, and I've learned a lot from other players mistakes I have to say that I have to say that why because uh, it, it's true uh, I've seen so many carriers just blow up so many AFK carriers just blow up to the point where I took all the necessary actions to ensure that I'm never asleep when I'm flying these things and also uh, that I'm never blind within the, within the system in these ships I always have a scout one of the requirements uh, that I always followed when when playing around with uh, with these ships is always have a scout, always know uh, what's around you. And I never trusted any blue. If a blue pops in, just duck. <laughs> you never trust the blue. Blue tackle is real, especially uh, especially now with super carriers running around. Blue tackle ships are in every major alliance. I can confirm at least. I, I I'm personally aware of one two three four uh, I think about six or seven outs that I'm not going to uh, I'm not gonna say who they are obviously but I'm aware of about seven outs in different corporations and alliances that are blue tackle they're just waiting they're just waiting for, for the moment to strike so I'll just leave it at that and yeah that's that's how you make that's how you make everyone paranoid now with that information out now everyone's paranoid anyway Anyway, good luck with those blue tackles, by the way. <laughs> I'm just gonna wait for the... I'm just going to sit and wait to see the kill mills and just enjoy the... the just enjoy the blown up super care. You will see what I'm talking about in the, in, in the next couple weeks. So, um... As we have already... Uh, well, as we have already seen in, in... In previous examples of the CN care, This thing is... When compared to the rest of the chips, at the moment, uh, against the Astarte, it is about the same uh, in terms of the total DPS. Now, the thing with Versatile Assault Ships, as mentioned, you can change the Hangar Bay, and you can have higher DPS or lower DPS. It really depends on uh, your need, but in this case, the current Hangar Bay with my current Astarte builds and this CNG, they they're about the same in performance, so yeah. Uh, at the moment, the CN carry is cheaper to afford, cheaper to build, and you get about the same performance, same DPS as a, a versatile solar trip that has two destroyers and one and one frigate slot. Which honestly, I would say it's pretty good, considering the fact that. The, that build for the Versatile Assault Ship costs a lot more than the than a build on the CNC. The CNC care in this case engaged. does seem to be the well the 
better cost effective uh, way to go if you want a faction care but again tell me what you think uh, about these two ships I'm very interested to see what you guys think uh, would you get, would you buy a CN care or would you get a versatile a versatile assault ship and would you use the two destroyer layouts with one frigate or would you use the four destroyer slots uh, layouts that's also uh, something that I'll be testing out in one of the next videos but with that being said hope you guys enjoyed uh, if you would like to support me feel free to like and subscribe and with that being said stay safe fly safe and as always I'll see you next time